John Amiranti in 2005 Charles Wenzelberg the Rangers great in 1994 Stanley Cup champion shared his memories of legendary garden anthem singer John Amiranti, who died Tuesday at the age of 83. As told to the Post's Brett Sire Gallus, probably the most memorable version of the national anthem John Amiranti ever sang, he never really heard. No one did. That would be June 14, 1994, just before Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final, Rangers vs. Canucks. I can honestly say I loved hearing John, every rendition. Certainly that one might have been his best, and no one could hear it because the garden was so electric. I couldn't hear it while standing on the blue line. I think if you asked him, it was probably his most exciting and exhilarating performance, but maybe one of the most difficult. From talking to him, when you are singing, you're listening for the organ and cues and different points of reference. That particular night, as he sang both the Canadian and American anthems, there were no points because it was just so loud. For me, it's part of that special energy that takes place only at Madison Square Garden, and he was so integral to that. I know what a great privilege it was to stand out there for the national anthem, quite often beside Brian Leach and Mark Messier, and with Mike Richter in net behind us, and my teammates, and to listen to him sing the national anthem. It was inspiring. It set the tone for the night. His singing, his passion and his incredible talent, but also his passion for the Rangers and his passion for the Garden, came through in his words and his song, so very proudly and clearly and beautifully. John was just such a caring man, someone who cared so much about his family. I know how fortunate he was with Anne, his wife. What a great relationship they had. It wasn't just at the Garden. They would come and support us at all of our different charitable events. Most recently, our alumni game tour when we go out and play games in the community and raise money for hockey in the tri-state area. He would take the roof off the buildings. I and the other alumni who happened to be playing in those games, whether it would be Ron Duguay or Stefan Matto, would skate to the penalty box and walk with him out on the mat for him to sing that national anthem, and it would leave people speechless. Adam Graves Getty Images and I know that feeling. I was lucky enough to stand on the garden ice but I can tell you as a fan, I never wanted to be late to the building because I didn't want to miss him. I wanted to be in my seat. To this day, whenever I hear his voice, it inspires all of us. That's the thing when you listen to music that it brings back memories. For a lot of fans, it will take fathers back and mothers back to where they were sitting with their loved ones and listening to John. When you first find out Tuesday morning about his death, you take a step back and you're terribly saddened because a part of your family, and he was part of our family at the garden, was lost. Someone who meant so much to us, and his legacy is such a great one and certainly what he meant to so many. And not just to the players, the organization, but most importantly the fans and the people of New York. It takes you through many emotions, from sadness to smiling when you think about what a good man he was and all the great times and the moments you spent together. Everyone knew John Amiranti, and everyone was excited to hear him sing. It was generational. From young to old, he was respected by all, and his talent was appreciated by all. I knew how proud he was, and how much the garden meant to him. And I know how much he meant to the garden. It was a special relationship. We were very, very fortunate, and I was very, very fortunate, to call him a friend.